S-C-A-L You are now rocking with that dude Pascal We be going wild, Haitian in the building So, so, so original, got the haters, got your feelings Get your hands up to the ceiling And keep them held high, cause some of this isn't ready Forget about it, goodbye Hold up, we just saying hi Five, somebody rise up Weekdays, catch us live, somebody let's go Good morning Good afternoon and good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Pascal Show. Hope you guys are all doing well out there. Hope this show finds you in great spirits. Because we need all the positivity that we can get out here in these streets. Let's be real. Man, um, you know, this is this is kind of a different intro today. The reason why I say that is because we've been on this case and talking about this situation with Riley Strain for a long time now and of course we found out later later on in our our desperate search the the constant questions etc we found out later of course the unfortunate and devastating news of him being found in the river but there have been new questions new things that have sparked since the time that he was found 8.5 miles down from the place where he was last seen alive. There's been a lot of questions, still a lot of a a desperate search for answers and for more clarity about what happened to Riley strain. Again, I'm still wondering what the hell happened here. I think a lot of us are wondering what the hell happened here. The family, is still wondering the same things as well. And hopefully by bringing on our friend here very, very soon, we're going to be able to get some more clarity and maybe steps towards finding out the truth of what happened in those last few moments Riley Strain was still alive. Now, before we get into everything, please do me a favor. Hit that like button down below. Hit that reaction button. If you're watching on other platforms, that would really, really mean a lot. Please be sure to do that. Okay, hit that follow button on X, Facebook, wherever you're watching. Follow me on on TikTok as well. That'd be greatly appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. That'd be greatly appreciated, of course, as well. If you want to support the channel, hit that join button down below. Become a member. Check out my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the Pascal show. And of course, check out my merch, pascalmerch.com. Okay. But most definitely hit that like button, show as much love and support as you can. The more you guys hit that like or hit that reaction button, the more Riley Strain's story gets out there and stays out there until we get clarity and transparency on what happened to Riley Strain. Anyway, guys, we got to get into this, okay? We got to get straight into this. As you guys already know, this young man was out in Nashville at a fraternity convention, having a great time, hanging out with his friends, drinking, hitting up the bars, so on and so forth. Then he went up to Luke's 32 Bridge and was escorted out of that bar for being, quote unquote, or as they said, being overserved, right? He takes a walk down the street we obviously have seen a lot of footage of him staggering throughout the streets and then suddenly out of nowhere he disappears for weeks we have been out here trying to find where he was for weeks there's been many many eyewitnesses that that came out with information that obviously didn't lead to anything but still kept the story out here because any clue is better than no clue right We heard things about the homeless encampment in that area, the big tent city or old tent city being in that particular area where he was last seen. Then later, footage came out that the family saw that we have not seen, the public has not seen, where they show him walking beyond the first bridge, walking near the second bridge, right near the river. And of course, that's where he was last seen. That's where his phone was last pinged. And of course, weeks later, we were able to unfortunately find out that he was actually in the river. 
But there's been a lot of questions about everything, how he was found, et cetera. How he was found was the most part, most interesting part of it all because he was found without pants and boots, which is really, really strange. Also, there was, there was not any water in his lungs. What's up with that as well? Now, I understand that they say that this is something that happens, but it seems a bit odd, especially given the fact that he was in that water for so long. And we just have a lot of questions that still need to be answered. So to join us today, I'm very, very honored to have our friend back to the show again. So please welcome Chris Dingman to the show. Hey, Chris, how you doing, my brother? Bro, we're hanging in there, just uh, trying to catch up. But, uh, you know, we, we kind of talked before about how when we finally find Riley and he gets to come home and uh, the, the family gets to grieve, how our war room was then going to turn into an answer room. Uh, because up until then, we had a lot of great information brought in that, you know, is going to go together with this puzzle. But uh, at the priority was at that point just to find Riley. So the the family is in that mode right now. We we would love to have answers. Uh, you know, if this, guys, I don't think it was an accident. If it truly was, there's way too many people in the little bit of video footage that we do have that was there. Th this didn't happen at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning. This is 10 p.m. when, hey, back when we were young, you didn't leave the house till 9, 930 to go out and hit the clubs. And the only reason you did is you went at nine because that was still a little bit of the happy hour. So we got those free half five strings. There's just way too many people that's involved in this that we know physically on film that might have the answers we need to finish this puzzle. Yeah, I, I feel like there's a lot of things that still haven't been answered. A lot of unanswered questions that have been that are still just sitting on the table. And, and I like that you said that it's it's now going to be the answer room um, mm -hmm. that is going to shift over. So if you mind me asking, are you guys, are you guys content with the information that police have given you since the since they found Riley? Uh, it, it seems like most of the information we've been getting is from the general public. Uh, the police have been very tight lipped about this. And I do know in an ongoing investigation, they, they can't let a lot of stuff out if they're following leads. Uh, it's just the leads that, uh, we're getting that are not being followed up on that worry us a little bit. Yeah. Uh, can you explain a little bit? Do you mind expanding on that just a little bit? Uh, we've had several people that's reached out, uh, and uh, ironically, our two largest leads of this entire case come from social media. The right. finding of the debit card, uh, the couple that actually had, had listened to a podcast that was in that last video before the police officer cam video, they had heard about it, uh, reached out to an FBI friend of theirs that got in contact with us. They had left a message 48 hours prior to ever being reached back by uh, Metro Nashville Police that they were the ones in the video. So I understand, you know, it, it kind of struck me odd when the chief of police said, hey, we had over 200 tips on, uh, you know, crime stoppers, et cetera. Yet I was having people put in three-way conversations with me calling that exact institution. And for the longest time, they didn't even have a clue who Riley was. Uh, a couple of them even got pumped just straight to the cold case files. They didn't even go to missing persons. The voicemail went to cold case. So and then that may be a combination deal that Metro Nashville has struck yeah. me kind of odd. But uh, I know for a fact they had way more than 200 people call in and was leaving tips, which I'll be honest with you, I think was overwhelming. You know, uh, they had no idea that uh, when the police officers, they took the report Saturday afternoon uh, when they woke up Monday, that the entire world was setting in Nashville. They had no idea that they woke up, started looking at the billboards the media had flocked in, the TikTokers, the, the you know, Instagrammers, X, you. I mean, the world literally uh, introduced herself to Nashville that Monday morning and was looking for Riley, which is still being 30 years in the business just blows my mind how viral this went. And, and also confused me. And like you and everybody else, how did we have this kind of media power and not have answers? You know, I, I went out the following Saturday on a little bit of a, a rant on social media, wanting to know why other agencies hadn't been brought in. Uh, it wasn't a dick at Metro Nashville. It was just a simple fact. At that point, we had about a square mile radius 
of a search zone. Okay, and, and you get to looking at that eight, nine days straight, you're going to miss something. You get tunnel vision. And I was just begging for other, you know, TBI, FBI, you know, Homeland Security, just anybody to get a fresh set of eyes on what little bit of micro evidence we had. Yeah. And bro, 12 hours later, a debit card's found in the exact location that hundreds of people had been at already. Right. Uh, you know, it's just amazing. Uh, but do like you still I said, feel, do you still feel some type of way? Do you still feel some type of way about the debit card? Are you still, is that still something that's lingering in the back of your head of like, maybe it was, it was planted there, that kind of thing. You know, I'm not sure it was planted per se, but man, we discussed it. And you actually had one of your, your callers reach in too, you know, about it, about it, not, you know, me emphasizing that it wasn't dirty and, and I hope they actually got to do the experiment we talked about with their Frisbee and throwing it out in the yard for a week. Uh, yeah, I've had multiple retired FBI people reach out to me and 100 percent be, you know, like, hey, that's, you know, that's just odd. It's very odd, you know, that that car had, quote unquote, laid there for eight or nine days, whether it was submerged in water or just water adjacent, literally. Uh, there's going to be moisture on that card every day. You can look out your window right now. We're actually in a little bit of a windstorm here, dust particles. You know, all you got to do is you go and wash your car and the next day you come out this time of the year and it's covered in pollen. Your, your black or white car is kind of a cream white now or cream black now because of just the stuff that's in the air. So yes, that did yeah. strike me as odd. Uh, you know, it rolls back to the fact with the shirt, that shirt was actually a button up shirt with a pocket on it that Riley borrowed that night. That was not his shirt. And, and your brother know, like me, if you're not in a habit of putting something in that pocket, you know, that's going to be the last place you're going to put something. We right. also went back to the food truck video where Riley took his spill and, and hit the concrete barricade. Everybody I have talked to has been like, wow, if his pocket was loose enough for him to be in that position and to flop out, we have to understand that from where the walkway to where the actual sheer edge is, is almost 15 yards. Okay. To give you relativity. So Riley had gotten sick along the long way of the, you know, the walkway prior to where the couple was at, but right. just walked to the wall. He didn't try to go over a wall, didn't do anything like that. And when you see him with the police cam video, he's coherent, you know, Oh, there's a cop. How you doing, sir? You know, he's, Shows you the politeness of the boy, you know, just the way he reacted with the officer. And yeah, it just, we have so many questions. There's so much stuff that we know personally as Riley. One of them's been, you know, well, the pants being down, do you think he stopped to take a leak? And I 100% no. That is a very, very visual area. Uh, when you see the actual spot where the card was found, there's actually just little concrete pillars with a retaining deal across the top of it. You can go underneath or above. Of all my boys, Riley's not my son, but of all my boys, I had to find a restroom for Riley. You know, the good old days, hey, there's a tree, you know, don't right. don't embarrass yourself. Riley was not that kid. He was uh, he was a very humble kid. He was not doing the honorary stuff. My boy would have been the one that, you know, I had to tell people to walk away. He was being, ser you know, not serious. But, uh, no, I, I do not believe at all that was any of it. And to, to back me up on that, not just a family member. If you look at the geography of where this actually happened, it is a sheer drop of anywhere between 15 to 20 feet, depending on the water level, at that exact spot where that card was found. If you move over back towards the police footage, and which is maybe 10 feet or so, it's it's you know it goes from being a vertical to an, a very aggressive drop down into the homeless camps. There's no clear path. If you've been there and you have and you've looked at that, one mm -hmm. of the biggest things I said, well, what if he walked down the water? And I go, guys, you don't understand. You literally have to grab trees and bushes just to walk to the camps. And they're a zigzag formation. There is no, they couldn't be because they would literally just blow right out of there. So you've been there, brother. You can back me up on this. The, the geological area where all this stuff went down. No, I don't think he stopped to take a leak. Uh, that was not him at all. He would have been, you know, he would have, yeah, he's just not Riley. Me and normal guy, we'd have found a tree, but that was not him. The right. area where this all happened at, how there was no, in, in both autopsies, or the one that was done by the family plus the one done by master, there was no uh, significant blunt force trauma. What that means is there was no knives, gun, bullet wounds, uh, blunt force trauma as in a weapon like 
Ya. Hopefully I come back to you. There we go. Unfortunately, I just had a call. Are we back, brother? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, no, no blood force trauma, as there in you go. Yep. knives, bullets, bats, yep. anything like that. Um, which you know, we we already knew that from the Metro Nashville one, which you know was also good that he wasn't violently attacked. As far as that goes, we still don't know what happened. But when you look at the geography of where this happened at, how can somebody fall even at 22 years old? How can somebody fall or go through the pinball? area that I like to call it because you literally were bouncing off of trees and shrubs to get down to that. How's there no True. forcible trauma? You know, it just, and once again, a piece of evidence that really makes you question what happened. Yeah. One thing that I found interesting, um, you know, like just in that particular area where he was allegedly like where it last pinged and whatnot, I, I found that interesting, you know, just actually being there in the actual space and just seeing the just seeing that wooded area on uh, the embankment and it, it is a wooded area so part yeah. of me is like this part doesn't make sense but mm -hmm. there's one particular part right under the first bridge if my memory serves me correctly where there's like these cobble like these big rocks that are in the yep. in the ground just jutting out the ground and even so i i i was doing it live and i was like guys if i even me sober wearing flat shoes you know i'm wearing these chucks and i'm i'm walking over to the thing trying to have a conversation trying to be trying to live stream and i'm still stumbling over myself because of how uneven it was oh yeah that, that area was pretty pretty clean as far as that yes. that part so in my mind i go and i'm pretty tall too i mean he's much taller than me but even me at six four the 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 uh the railing was below my hips so I keep thinking mm -hmm. like, okay, maybe if he was really about to have a violent reaction, maybe he was about to purge himself, maybe he's about to vomit, whatever it may be, then maybe he, not knowing, maybe in his drunk mind, um, didn't have much balance. He's wearing those boots. And, you know, those boots have heels in them and all that. So it's not flat. He's not really looking at the ground. He may be more focused on trying to not puke right in the street or on the sidewalk but maybe off to the side so maybe he tripped on the rocks and fell over onto the embankment but just the momentum of his fall threw him into the river you see what i'm saying i, I mean that's just mm -hmm. one thought i had in my head but still which we will talk about later the autopsy still just doesn't make sense to me at all um but we're going to talk about that a little bit later um so that's just one thing that I noticed, at least in that part. The, the, but that's the only part. That's the only area that had rocks jutting out the ground. The only spot. So it is very interesting. It's very, very odd how that all, you know, all went down. Go and, and to help you with that just a little bit, too, the family actually was in Nashville Saturday evening by about 630. Uh, once they got done with the police, they went over in that area. There was no visible signs of anybody throwing up in that area. So that should help you a little bit. I mean, and there was there was there was rain previous Friday evening mm. before the boys got there. You see in all the videos, it's all dry. It's bare ground, like what you were saying, but there was no drag marks with boots. There was no evidence of urination, no right. vomit. Yeah. None of that was underneath that bridge that evening and Saturday evening. That's see, and that's so crazy and so odd. It just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. And the other thing, too, <laughs> yeah, of course, I'm probably we're probably going to circle back to this part, too. But let's talk about urination. I know that sounds weird coming out my mouth right now, but let's talk about that because let's be real. We've all have had a few too many in our in our lives. And when nature yep. calls, nature really calls. And one thing that's really great about being a guy, sometimes you can go off to the side hide behind the mm -hmm. pole and, uh, you know, do your business. So in my mind, I keep thinking, OK, and of course, we're going to be talking about this in a little bit. But um, in my mind, I keep thinking, could he have been really needing to take a leak? And on, but then in my mind, I go, if he needed to take a leak, why would he unbuckle his belt? That's the, instantly what I think. When we go take a whiz, fellas, I mean, ladies, I'm so sorry we're having this conversation. But if 
if you've been around boys, you know how we work. Okay. We got equipment down there. We're able to pull that out through our fly. We don't have to unbuckle our belt. So you see what I'm saying? So if he had to go and take a leak and he really like he really needed to do that really bad, why would he ever unbuckle his belt? No. It doesn't matter. Well, and, and what you're talking about right there, too, you've seen that area where we were talking about with the marble pillars. Guys, that is wide open. The entire length of that bridge, which is a four or five lane bridge above us, that area is beaten to the ground. And the reason why is when it storms real bad, that is where the homeless community goes. That, that I do know that for a fact because one of the storms come in the following week. And there's a reason that piece of ground that you saw is just worn smooth. Mm -hmm. That's where they move all their temporary stuff during bad storms to get out of bad weather. So, and it doesn't get the daylight and and everything else to regrow everything. That's not going to be, once again, from an extremely modest kid. We already know that his state of mind, whether he had had something slip to him or not, when he went by the officer, he was polite and had manners. It's not a kid that's going to go and stand in the middle of an open area to drop his pants. He's just not that kid. The one thing that's really inter- interested me, and I would love to find and get more answers on this. Yeah. Uh, the, the homeless people that was there, the one that yelled back up to a, a particular homeless person, right. asked what was going on. That cuts that five minute video in half. We now go from five minutes to about 90 to 120 seconds of nothing at that point. That is why in the family, it has been so important for them to actually maybe get to talk to that person because literally as far as we know and what we've been given by the media and and Metro Nashville, that is the last person to physically talk to Riley. And that was proven by showing the picture to the, you know, the couple that yelled back up they yeah. asked that gentleman, you know, hey, and and unfortunately, in these situations, too, 90 percent of the homeless do not want to be talked to or, or have people in their area, et cetera. Uh, and when this all went down, the, what privacy they did have got blown out of the water. So that that particular individual did not stay in that area. He was in Nashville, went to another camp. Mm. As far as we knew, the police was still trying to reach out to him. The day that they found Riley, I actually had went right back down to to that area. Uh, I was helping the girls repack uh, their pop up tent, their flyers, and stuff. And, and we're talking within an hour and a half of, of them doing the press conference for Riley. And one of the girls turns around, and looks at me, and she goes, "Hey, that's him." And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" Because that's the guy that supposedly was the last one. So. He had already went by me uh, on a bicycle, and I, I followed him a little bit. And uh, Olivia, uh, you know, Chronicles Olivia, she was down there with her TikTok crew. She's way younger than me. I'm old. And uh, she, her and her associates started following him just to see. And I said, hey, don't don't interfere with him. Let's just see where he goes so we can let the police know so they can actually interview him because we did not know whether they had talked to him or not. And in the meantime, the girls had called Metro Nashville. And to let them know that we had somebody that had found this gentleman, they were following him, and we were told to immediately stand down, that they were no longer a person of interest, and uh, to not bother them, mm. which still blows my mind. You know, if that's the case, then why wasn't the family brought into the information per that conversation? You know, the, the last video, too, of between the two bridges, they say it's grainy. It's no grainier than the detention video. Uh, that is verified hmm. from the family. So my only thought on it is, well, maybe maybe there is something in that video going back towards Nashville, not towards the detention center, that maybe they were following up on. And, and bro, that's almost going on two weeks. You know, so wow, a lot of confusion on that. I know Friday, uh, News Nation and several other, because I, I've been – trying to stay as active as this I could, but we were actually in Florida on base with my son. So I had very limited cell phone service, but I was like, Hey, do me a favor. Just reach out uh, to Metro Nashville and let's see how the case is going. See if they have any new information to relinquish. And we had multiple reporters that called in and was told that it was no longer an ongoing investigation, that it was, uh, they were waiting on toxicology to move forward. 
What? Which blew my mind. That blew my mind. So this was verified through other. This isn't just a single deal. This was multiple news people that reached out. The family actually talked to the detectives yesterday. Uh, they had sent them a message Monday. The detectives reached back out on Tuesday uh, wanting to know some more information. And then they asked, you know, say, hey, we've been told by multiple news agencies that they go, oh, no, there was just some confusion. It's, it's not a missing person. It's a death investigation. Now, that's that's why they didn't understand when they called in. And I'm like, you, you think with the name Riley Strain, that would be as amount of calls that they've got. That would be something. But it, it is what it is. So right. the police did. Uh, we did. The, the family did actually ask for whatever difference it is. It is now a death investigation. It's still not a criminal investigation. But right. But yeah, and one other thing I'm going to get to you too real quick. Sure. Uh, the We're going to talk about the coroner's report. The war room was given the information about the lack of water in the lungs. Okay, so we found that was secondhand information. We have been avidly trying to verify that because the, the information we were given was from a extremely very reliable source that actually had given us more information than the police had given us just literally moments before the police did. Uh, so we reached out as a family. We were told by multiple people in Nashville. I, I do not know law on this, and that's why we're having this conversation. But the family should have been eligible for the current report. Uh, we know the toxicology is not available. Uh, unfortunately, it could take 90 plus days for toxicology from both autopsies. So we do know that. But we were told, and I don't know if the information was correct, but we were told that the family, immediate family, Ryan, Riley's dad, or Michelle, his mother, could reach out to the actual corner uh, uh, metro or uh, Nashville, and they would possibly be able to give the information that they do have uh, to date on what actually had happened. So that was my question. Okay, if well, let's verify that there was no water in the lungs. If there was water in the lungs, I want to know what was it? River? Was it tap water? Was it something yeah. else? Possibly. There's there's a lot of options. And they were told by the coroner that uh, until the toxicology comes back, no information can be released to the family, immediate family. <laughs> I, once again, I, I, that may be, but I, I was like, well, how come these other people are reaching out saying us that they have been in this situation and gotten it? Yeah. Hey, welcome to our show. But we've reached out to our uh, person that did our autopsy. Uh, they reached out yesterday afternoon. I've not had a chance to follow up on the family. I, I do want to get that clarified 100%. You know, if there was water in the lungs, which at this point we're under the assumption there was not because nothing's been given forward, but also made the comment. I go, man, you think with what's going on, that would be, that's information that's already been done in process. Right, right. You think they would, as, as big as an issue as this has been with everybody trying to investigate this, that's a huge clue, you know? So that in the belt, the fact that we know that Riley was wearing a belt, uh, you know, and you're you about to talk about what we talked about earlier, but going with your question. But, but real quick, <laughs> you're saying Riley was indeed wearing a belt. Yeah, how yes. do you know, but how do you know that? How do you have that confirmation for sure? Riley, Riley wore a belt every day. Uh, he, he, we've joked around about it, uh, about him having a swimmer's body. My son is very similar. Uh, he's kind of built like a V. Right. Bless him hard. I want him to do leg day more. But at your height, you understand how hard leg day is. It's tough, that's why I tried to. I it's know. Tough. That's what I've told him. <laughs> I said, guys, you got Michael Phelps. You're going to take the next eight gold. So. Uh, Riley had to wear a belt. It wasn't just because it was cool and trendy. Riley wore a belt to keep his pants on him. And so mm. we know he had a belt with him. Interesting. So he, he did have a belt. Okay. So he was a creature of habit. I get it. Yes. And, he, and it was the, it was a belt. I'm assuming that he wore for years. Like he was just, yep. but we're, we're men like guys will wear things till they fall off. Let's, let's keep it real. Oh, like, yeah. We'll wear that oh, yeah. belt until we'll wear that belt until that belt snaps off. Right. Mm -hmm. um, shoot. The, he, if it lasts long enough, he could probably pass it down to generation to generation for, for crying out loud. Um, yep. That's how much we keep things. We hold on to things. Um, but th that is very interesting. I, I know that we're going to be talking about that here in a little bit. But yes. So he was indeed everybody who's watching right now. He was indeed wearing a belt. And that is a big piece of information. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about all these other things here in, in, in a little bit. But can we go back? Real quick, I know this is going to be very uh, not easy to talk about, but the day that he was actually found, 
Um, one thing I want to say is that, um, and this is kind of a personal thing. Uh, I am sorry. Um, because I had found out that's why I was racing over to you. I don't know if you know that I was trying to get to you so I can give you the news because I didn't know if you had known. And, uh, we were actually at the spot where he was found mm -hmm. and then no one was there. So we were, I was racing back to you because I had just found out about that information about him being found and him being identified. And I'm on the phone with you and I'm racing down the, the highway and uh, I, I just I, I could I didn't have in the heart to tell you right there on the phone, but because I wanted to tell you to your face, you know, person, you know, face to face, person to person. Um, so, you know, I, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to uh, uh, I just didn't know how to break that news to you on the phone just to be. I appreciate honest. you. That's on a personal. Oh, no, brother. I and, and like I said, you know, we, we've only talked a couple of times, but I know you're good people and you know, I am. And it was one of those deals, too, that. Uh, Immediately, our phones lit up. Uh, ironically, uh, when I was leaving the house that morning, I had just done an interview, and Chris and Michelle and the family got a call from a local reporter. And I was walking out the house, and the house got quiet. And I had a really good feeling, not a good feeling. I had a bad feeling that something had happened because uh, they got quiet. Uh, I thought Ryan had already left the house and had went to – uh, hop on the boat. He was actually upstairs getting ready, but uh, they had been notified that uh, they were pretty sure that Riley had been found and that, uh, you know, it wasn't official yet, but just to brace the family. So we were on our way transit to go meet a possible lead on some information. Mm -hmm. uh, we were, we were downtown at the, at the spot and yeah, my phone started going off like a slot machine. You called yeah. me brother. I, I appreciate that sincerely. Because I, I was um, on the phone and I'm driving down the road. I'm blazing down the road because I'm like, I got to get to him. I got to get to him before, you know, uh, uh, right. I, I just felt like it, it would. I don't know. I felt obligated to tell you to your face rather than. I, I thought a part of me just did not want you to find out through the news. Does that make sense? And if, and if I was, course, and if I was connected to the uh, Riley's parents, I would be saying the same doggone thing right now. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't for the life of me, just say it to you on the phone. So I was like, you know what, let me just get over there as quickly as I can. But what was the rapport when uh, the, the information came out that he was actually found, you know, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to put a pen in this one for you too, brother. That's what family does. Family likes to tell bad news in person. Okay. And no you know, the, the rapport was, uh, I had about 90 seconds, 60 seconds to go. Wow. You know, uh, the world stopped at Mach Mach five. Cause that's what we had been traveling at up until that point, trying to find Riley. Mm -hmm. And it, it sincerely was a matrix moment. You know, you were hearing different things in the background. I actually had uh, Lisa with me that had been with Michelle the entire time she'd been there in Nashville, one of her super, super close friends. And we left the house together and had some really wild moments going to that downtown spot with Internet activity. Uh, GPS is not working right. It was just me and her. We, we've looked back on that and go, wow, that's, you know. There was a reason for that. Riley was just, you know, he was there. And we looked at each other and she was actually with a person we were supposed to be meeting for some possible evidence. And she just looked at my face and she just broke down. I didn't mm -hmm. have to tell her, you know, and uh, we, we gathered ourselves up because we knew that, you know, we needed to keep moving forward, help, help move forward, get this thing, the family, you know, that's why we, we stayed away from the house for, four or five hours because it was literally just immediate family in the house. We needed, they needed the time. Uh, we were still troopers at that point. Uh, I needed to help the young ladies pack up their stuff, get more information. Um, you know, Riley was such a huge conservation person. He loved everything in nature, you know, and when the gentleman got lost and turned around in the parking garage down there with that Highland calf, and I just looked over and I'm like, I got you. Yeah, I understand. Uh, I'm sure uh, Riley is speaking in many, many ways, right? His energy is uh, still just 
permeating through everybody, uh, everybody who's been touched uh, by this case for sure. Um, you know, and my uh, seriously, my condolences and my heart goes out to you guys for real. It's uh, it's a devastating situation um, to find out this way. So in the autopsy, re- just so we know, did they mm-hmm. does it say anything about how long he actually was in the water? That is. Oh, trust me. That's something I want to know. Uh, the amount of manpower that was on that river. For basically two weeks straight Mm -hmm. and for him to be found you know the very first day they were on the water that tuesday following him missing friday they went 15 miles down the river you know uh it's just incredible unfortunately there was two other people that had went in the water uh while we were down there looking for eiley and they were found uh one was found in about 17 hours and the other one less than 24 blows our mind thank god their family have have found them and they know what's going on but yeah so those wow two, so those two bodies those two other bodies remember guys there were two bodies that were actually found during the search for riley two completely different bodies separate from riley those were found within 24 to 48 hours of them actually being in the water am i correct there that's that's and i and somebody mentioned to me there was even i think a third hmm. There was either one right before Riley and then the one that, uh, unfortunately, I think jumped off the bridge. And then there was a third person that, by the grace of God, uh, Ryan and the guys were out in the boat that night at about 11 o'clock looking at the river with the sonar and the high def lights. And a homeless person fell in the river and probably would have passed away also. But they were there looking for Riley and they got to save a life. So, but but what's interesting is that I've seen other footage. People have been tagging me on, on TikTok like crazy with certain videos of people swimming in the actual river. So, I mean, Mm -hmm. is the river that, is, is the river that strong? Is the current that strong or no? Cause that's one thing I'm still kind of curious about. It it can be, uh, we're in it's during, there's different locks, AKA dams along the Cumberland. And it just depends on whether they have the locks open or not for, for flood control or not. Uh, we had a gentleman that come on that actually uh, does the uh, river studies. I'm an uneducated man. I don't know what you actually call it, but he right. said most generally it was 4.1 feet per second and flood stage it would run anywhere between eight and nine feet per second. To give you an idea, yes, that river depending on what was going on in it, they had had rain prior to the boys getting there. The river was up. So they were figuring anywhere between the six and eight, eight point feet per second, which that's moving pretty good, you know, but it just, once again, a lot of questions, you know, we we get a little bit of information and we have more questions than we have answers. Right. Another question though, um, because I know that the Cajun Navy, uh, Equisearch, uh, they were all out there. Of course, uh, law enforcement were out there, too, doing everything they can to find Riley. But they're the ones who actually didn't find Riley. What's interesting is it was uh, uh, some employees for that sp- specific facility that were able yes. to find him under a barge, right? So my question is... Actually, he was not. I thought he was under a barge. And we all did when they initially found him. If you go back and listen to the 911 call, there was debris that was in that area prior to where the barge was. Mm -hmm. And the gentleman had to go, he had to go lift a log off of Riley's head. Yes. He did say that on the 911 call. He did. Yes. So we originally thought, yeah, we originally thought he was underneath the barge. Apparently it was a debris filled that you know where the barge is set up it was a debris filled right you know before where the barges are that he found him which they had uh they come in a couple days before they ship out to clean those areas to make sure the barges have free you know entrance and stuff like that uh but yeah no once again though the guys they had been there a lot you know they had been around all the barges all the holding areas that's exactly what I was going to ask. So you're telling me that Equisearch, Cajun Navy, police, every other acronym you can think of under the sun that was out there searching, all hands on deck trying to find Riley Strain. They passed by that area 
probably multiple times and yes. found nothing. So question, do they have a time of demise? Is there a time of death that was confirmed for Riley? No. At this point, and that's what we were also hoping to see in the autopsy to show, one, how long Riley may have been in the water uh, in an actual time of death. You know, gotcha. and the wild part is, is Ryan, uh, Riley's dad was actually on one of the boats and in that area, uh, Thursday night, uh, it was either Wednesday night or Thursday night, super late. They had, they were dropping pins in areas that they were wanting to have the dogs come in search on the land portion of it because they couldn't get to it on that. And I'm pretty sure it was that Thursday night before Riley was officially found Friday morning that was one of the areas that they had possibly pinned for the animals to come in that area. Now they had been in that area numerous times before. So I, I will say this to kind of back that up a little bit, sure. uh, the core, uh, and I can't, I'm not going to butcher the County's name that the first uh, lock is just past Nashville, but uh, the sheriff's department there actually reached out to the Corps of engineers and they shut that lock down and drained it. And in doing so, they were able to look in the bottom of the lock at the debris. Uh, apparently, a lot of times in these cases, when a body does go through, they'll get held up in those locks and debris. But in doing so, that actually back flushed the Cumberland River. So if you're constantly having water, which a lot of people didn't realize that river went east to west, not west to east through Nashville. It flows backwards to a lot of communities. If that river's constantly flowing east to west and, and Riley may have been lodged underneath something, that constant pressure, he's not going to move. But when they shut that lock down and backfilled the Cumberland River, uh, in theory, they were hoping that would take the pressure off of whatever maybe Riley had been pinned against and then allow him to you know, be found. That was on a Wednesday. Uh, Riley was found Friday morning. So right. I we... That is a possibility. I'm just trying to give everybody the information we know. You think, though, and just talking with everybody that does this, it's usually in 24 hours since that something happens with the back pressure, since there wasn't a mass flow of water coming back after they opened it, that he would have been to the top. But unfortunately, we, we've had a lot of people, too. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different theories from the corners from, you know, how long a body will stay in the water versus having water in the lungs and not, and, you know, et cetera. Uh, right. It um, just creates more questions. No, no kidding. No kidding. It does create a lot more questions. And, uh, you know, and I feel like this is the part of the conversation that is going to get a little uncomfortable, um, mm -hmm. you know, because there's going to be some hard questions I'm going to be asking. So I'm just, you know, with all due respect, I'm going to try oh. to be, you know, just know I'm coming from a place of love. And a place of respect uh, when yep. I start asking these questions. But he was found in that area, not by EquiSearch, by Cajun Navy, not by law enforcement, but an employee. Now, when he was found, I know this is tough. I know we, we know about pants gone, boots are gone, cell phone, wallet, all that stuff gone. And obviously th those would be on his, on his person in those pockets, mm -hmm. allegedly, if he was to still have his pants on. Now, I, I hate to ask you this question, but did he have underwear on? Yes, he did. So he did have underwear on. He that did have really when originally, weird. yeah, when originally it came out, uh, we were something was told that he was completely naked from the waist down. Raleigh had his socks and underwear on. Wow. Whoa. Okay. So see, so sorry. Sorry for the big reaction. But to me, that's a that's weird. Okay, because, you know, uh, as we're all logical, intelligent people out here, yes, it's very quick, easy for us to quickly think, foul play instantly. But then, of course, you put in a little bit of logic. Maybe nature had something to do with this. Maybe his pants got snagged onto a, a twig or mm -hmm. debris or something like that. Maybe the okay. current from the water, from the river, ripped his pants off and his boots off. Okay, but now that we're hearing about the belt, being you know on his body he wears it religiously every single day and of course boots they're not easy to take off they're really not easy to take off i mean you know i don't own cowboy boots but i can only imagine them being not easy to take off right they're kind of glued to your body but yep. now that i'm hearing the fact that he did have underwear on 
and those didn't rip off. So those stayed snug on his body, but his pants, his belt, his shoes all ripped off. That mm-hmm. doesn't make any that doesn't make any sense, y'all. That it doesn't, doesn't make track. Any sense, Chris. No. So c- can we talk about this a little bit? So he sure. was found with his sh- the shirt still on him, right? Mm-hmm. But he, and of course, even so, if the if the current was that strong, wouldn't that rip his shirt off as well? Wouldn't he be found completely stark naked in the water mm-hmm. if the current was that strong? So, do you mind? What are your thoughts on this? Because I, I don't no, know. No, I crazy. you know I I agree hundred percent. There, like I said, every little piece of this puzzle we've gotten is giving us a hundred more questions. You know, boots, whether you've worn them or not, uh, boots when they get wet. Uh, prime example, when your tennis shoes are wet, you know how much harder they are just to get off. Now, take a size 15 boot. I call them pontoons because if you've ever been on a boat in a pontoon, that's what they look like. They're about that size. And and Riley had pontoons for feet, bless his heart. And, uh, yeah, guys, leather, when it's wet, is extremely tough, let alone anything else trying to pull off of something. My thoughts exactly. If the water current was so strong and it sucked those pontoons off his feet, how'd the socks not go? How the underwear? The underwear is going to be the loosest thing on that kid's body just for obvious reasons. You know, it's got elastic on it. But, hey, if the water's doing that type of stuff, boy, it's going to rip that plastic right, you know, the elastic right apart. Absolutely. Just, Just wow. How there is, you know. And the frustration with the family wishing this was a more uh, active investigation as far as the criminal side of it. Guys, everywhere we go, we have a hundred questions, but no answers to prove it. That's why we're, we're doing these shows and we're reaching out to incredible media people and trying to find that five, 10 or 12 people that literally last saw Riley in that area, in that bridge. If it was truly an accident and they saw him taking a leak and he fell, then somebody knows. There was just too many people in that area to not know something. You know, if Riley ended up walking, if one of the homeless people said, hey, bud, come here, I'm going to help you for a minute, and stepped off the path, that would explain why he literally disappears. Right. But from the homeless people we've talked to, Riley never come into the camps. You know, and, and that's something you can verify what I'm, I've been trying to explain to everybody. The way those camps are set up and the way to get to them. Did you ever go down into the camp, down to the river? I, I did not. But well, I you know it. how. But yeah. I did see it, for sure. Yeah. So what I'm trying to explain is, guys, if Riley would have been out of control going down there, he would have crashed through one of those camps. That's just the way they were set up, and that's how vertical going down to the river at that area was. So there was nothing. Nothing's been said about that. I just. There's so many answers, you know, that we need right now, and we're not unfortunately not getting anything. Yeah, it's it, this is a, a a wild one. But then, what inspired you guys? Because they they did an autopsy. What inspired you guys to do your own independent autopsy? Why did that happen? Initially? We we actually had uh, a lot of people that has been supporting the family and going through this that reached out that that suggested that the family do that. Uh, actually, the local funeral home here uh, offered up a service for somebody to do that also uh, for when they come in. I do know that there was, you know, I can't get graphic in it, but there was a lot of different things that a traditional autopsy uh, might have done. I don't know whether, Matt, you know, Nashville did or not, but we did. Looking for specific things for like water trauma, uh, time, you know, we've been talked about. Not to gross people out, but, you know, bacteria that actually is in the water that would be into the body to help determine the amount of time a body was in. Uh, right. Just some some legit CSI stuff, you know. So I do know that was. Unfortunately, that's also part of the deal. It's a 90, 90 plus day deal. But we've had a lot of incredible people that has been following this from day one, documenting every story, every piece of evidence that's found. You know, and I love that. You know, if this does turn into what possibly could be a criminal case, whether it is or not, uh, we've got an incredible amount of documentation and people that's followed this to make sure that that information is given. Yeah, I I know that the whole world, as soon as they found out about the pants, the boots, the no water in the lungs, um, I know that a lot of people were very 
I mean, I was shocked. I, I, I'm gonna be yeah. honest. You know, I'll take it on a selfish tip for a second. I was absolutely shocked because in my mind, it doesn't seem to make sense. Once you hear everything else, once you hear all right. the added pieces, now that I'm hearing no that that his underwear was still on him, so then and his socks were still on him. So the gust of the 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 strength of the current is that strong, so strong that is it can rip off his pants and boots without any problems, or you know, over time, but leave his underwear and his socks on. It's like it this doesn't make sense to me. But then when you hear about the the autopsy and that there's no water in the lungs, and I know and I understand that it's still a possibility of his mm -hmm. uh windpipe closing up and and that does actually happen in other cases that there's dry dry drowning that actually can happen it it, it it's still very rare it's not a a large amount of it's not 50 50 it's not 75 25 it's more 20 percent 15 to 20 percent so i look at that and i go this just doesn't make fully any sense so I, I don't know. And so I commend you guys for doing your second autopsy and getting an independent autopsy uh, and toxicology uh, report back. Is there. Are you guys trusting law enforcement? I mean, given the fact that everything that has transpired leading up to finding Riley, I can understand there being a little hesitation in fully under fully believing or being content with law enforcement's performance out there as far as the results and whatnot. Is that kind of what's going on and one of the reasons why there was a second autopsy as well? Um, I'm going to answer that, but I'm going to help you a little bit too. Uh, sure. We had actually a gentleman that uh, does forensic science on bodies, and it was on another show that I was on, and he had done over 4,000 cases uh, dealing with, with bodies, etc., and he was point blank to ask how many of those had been dry asphyxiation. He said 12. So that will help you narrow your, your numbers down. Out of 4,000 that this gentleman did for a living, he had 12 that had had dry asphyxiation. Now, once again, wow. I, you know, this was, this was second-hand information to the family. We have been trying like crazy to get them to give us that information. You think with what's going on. In the public right now, and that would have been something they could have given up because that's something they know. Uh, unfortunately, it's not. Now, as far as the police go, uh, I, I I would like to say I, I've, I've been a, a supporter of our local police department because I have a lot of friends that are in it, and they're, they're legit good cops. Uh, I think Metro Nashville was, was completely overwhelmed, uh, kind of like what we talked about earlier. Uh, they went in. It was a fraternity boy weekend. Guys, we've we've all had friends. We you and me have talked about it. Went out, had one of those hangover movie weekends. Uh, epic. Glad that uh, my age, they didn't have video recorders back then. Type stuff, but uh, right. Statute of limitations were okay now, but uh, you know, it's one of those deals that I, I sincerely think Monday when they rolled into work to you know really dig into this, uh, they opened their doors and had the world setting on it, and was not prepared for the mass of TikTok and media and sluice and everything to show up and, and not just show up to show up and, and, and force, which is incredible. You know, oh, yeah. I, I think they were overwhelmed. I, I, I think the ball's been dropped on a lot of things, but I also know that they, and, you know, I made the comment. I said, I have no proof of this, but I'm going to tell you right now, this is probably the most information that has been given to those detectives in any case they've ever, ever done, which, I, I have empathy for the people that are in Nashville that I have ongoing cases going on right now. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't set out to do this and create the media storm we did. So they would be put on the back burner. I just wanted this to try to help find, uh, you know, one of our kids is not mine, but you know, one of those situations and the incredible amount of force that showed up was just overwhelming for the police department. Man, uh, you know, <sighs> There are so many questions, uh, and I feel like a lot of it has to do with the fact that the family did speak out, and I think there's a reason why that everybody's kind of giving the law enforcement at least no no disrespect, no dig at law mm -hmm. enforcement. I mean, of course, we appreciate their service and all that. Yep. But I do also feel that when they did come online and 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 say, "Hey, you know, we we're trying to get them to." 
give us any piece of information. I think that gave everybody uh, a reason to give them a soft side eye, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and then given the fact that you guys are still doing, you know, there's another autopsy going on. They the, now that this investigation is closed and they it, it's not. It, they're not looking at it as a possible foul play is uh is still beyond me. I, I find it very odd, especially with with the information that we got here. Real quick, mm -hmm. just so I, I know a little bit more. I understand that he's six, 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 seven, hundred and sixty pounds. This guy's super skinny, right? Yep. And he's wearing these boots, as you called pontoons, right? He's wearing these size 15s and I can relate. I wear that's that's I wear pontoons as well, but not boots. But the boots that he was wearing, have you ever seen him in those boots before? Personally? Oh yeah, that, that was his favorite boots. Are they, were they tightly on him or were they kind of loose? I'm just curious about. No, that. they actually uh, when he had his socks on, they were snug. Snug. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, these are not cheap boots, so I can see him wearing them a lot and wearing them till they fell off his feet, um, pretty much. Uh, I mean, that's how us fellas do it, right? Yep. Um, but, all right. Now, is there anything else as far as him being found, the autopsy? Of course, we're still waiting on the toxicology report. Is there anything else revolving around this this situation, this case, that you guys are still trying to get answered? Still a pending question, burning question that you're trying to get answered right now? You, you know, we just would like to know more information. We know that there are people that have been in that area. I don't know. You know we're we're six and a half hours away, uh, yeah. which is incredible because you know we we got to bring Riley home. I, I you know, you, you always watch the crime show dramas and you see the people that go through this stuff and they never oh, yeah. find their child or their loved one or their family member. I this has been brutal. I can't imagine what those families are going through. Uh, the one little ray of, of hope that we've had in this, and I had extreme guilt. Uh, I was blessed to be in the motorsports side of the media industry for 30 plus years. And I had a couple of friends I reached out to that uh, are dinosaurs like me, and they put me in the right, uh, right area to get this thing to go viral and do what it did. Uh, but I had a little guilt over that because there's so many people that are missing that can't find loved ones, they would literally come up to us on the street and say, Hey, I lost, you know, I lost my brother four years ago and, and my husband never came home and, and, you know, brother, that's brutal. But it also, they would tell me, Hey, thanks for the media that you guys have generated. And I'm talking about you and everybody else. I'm just a, I'm just a, a face that was made for radio that has a voice to gab. And uh, they're now getting new leads. There's people that's invested in that happen to be looking for Riley clues that ran into their case. Wow. They're actually in our home state. Yeah. Let's dig into that. And it is, it's incredible that other people, you know, due to this horrible thing that happened to Riley, there may be answers for other people that didn't get answers. We're, I don't want to seem greedy, but I still want answers, but having even been to where we're at right now. So yeah. brother, do what you do and everybody else that's followed this and helped and, just know that it's not not Riley and our family. You guys are literally helping other families too. You've given them hope. Uh, you've regenerated cases, and dude, that's incredible. Well, of course, you know it's an honor to be a part of just being able to help get his voice out there, get his name out there, and of course, you know, trying to find him. Uh, I, I feel like a lot of people, the whole world was grabbed by this this whole story. I mean, there are people who are watching um, the show right now, uh, watching from Spain, South Africa. I mean, from everywhere, everybody was grabbed by this story. But I, I'm actually worried. I'm actually curious about people who actually were or may not have been grabbed by this story. So I'm going to ask you something really quick. Sure. You know, he was on a he was on a fraternity convention. OK, he was on a trip with his fraternity. He left. Mm -hmm. He called his fraternity boys back, letting him know that he was seemingly uh, unbeknownst to him. He was walking in the wrong direction, but he was walking home. He was walking back to the hotel. Right. Mm -hmm. Have you heard anything from his fraternity brothers personally? 
Has have they reached out? Has the fraternity reached out to the family at all, or have they just been quiet because of I don't know some weird secret society BS? <laughs> you may have discussed that. Uh, the fraternity actually did reach out to me before I left to uh, go see my son, and wanted to know if they were okay to come to the funeral. Uh, so I reached out to the family. Uh, the family agreed that yes, it would be fine for them to come and. They actually bust the boys down Friday uh, as a group. Uh, they attended the service and then got back on the bus and, and went back home. So the brothers did did actually show up for the funeral. Uh, okay. I know the family got to talk just a little bit with them, you know, um, as hmm. far as everything else goes. No, you know, and, and I understand that they're, you know, well, if, if our go ahead. Why do you understand that? Why Why do you understand that? I no, mean, I, I understand, and, and I'm going to come at this, and, and it's it's an odd deal, but I'm a dad, you know, uh, and you and me have talked about us growing up and doing really stupid stuff growing up and blessed that we have our lives that we have right now. No doubt. Uh, I think some really bad decisions were made that night, 100%. Uh, it still bothers me that nobody walked out with Riley, but that's also on the lines of your friends that you are hanging with. You know, my friends, we were brothers, literally. And, you know, the, the wild part, if if one of us would have been asked to go out that bar, we went as a crew. Uh, there wouldn't have been, hey, I'm going to go back up and pay that tab. We'd have been laughing. We just got free drinks because we're all leaving as a pair. That And I am an old dinosaur. That's just the way I was raised. You did do nothing without each other. The sad part today with, with the internet and disposable relationships that our kids have been trained to have, uh, they don't have the bond. You know, I'm sure the boys are grieving. Uh, they know they've made some bad decisions. But, bro, they weren't raised with the bonds that we were raised with. I, I have best friends that I've had for 40-plus years that are not blood and are my family, you know, i.e. With, with Michelle and Jeff and, and Riley. They're always going to be family. But we right. were raised in an era to where that meant something, you know, uh, you know, grew up with a handshake was a handshake. You weren't always constantly trying to outdo each other. And the next coolest thing that come across the board, I call the 90 second attention span. Wow. They're just off, you know, and right. And it makes me sad. Uh, I do think there's a few boys in that fraternity that uh, this probably has affected. I also know that in today's society, a couple of years from now, unless they're back at that frat house looking at his memorial, which I'm assuming they're going to have. And if not, it's a very good ideal for that fraternity. Uh, they're not going to remember this, you know, but that's my personal opinion. That's just the way I was raised. Uh, they have short term memory. Uh, and I do think they showed up at the funeral. They were probably moved by what was happening. Uh, is it peer pressure that moved them or the fact they truly lost a brother? No, they, they jacked up. I don't know. I'm not a 22 year old boy in a fraternity, but a as a family member, not immediately. It's I was, you know, blessed. I was with my son and not at the funeral because I probably would have asked some questions that wasn't the time or place to do it. Right. But right. They, they were at the service. I mean, OK, I, I guess that's a step in the right direction. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, for me, it's like, uh, you know, obviously this this. Obviously, I'm a little emotionally attached attached to this to this case and to into this you and to this family and all that. So I I feel like that's a personally a little lackluster, but that's just my own personal opinion. Um, now, but I also do understand that they have allegedly lawyered up. Is that true? We we have had uh, well, we've had multiple news agencies that's reached out and tried to talk to the fraternity and and was told to see, to talk to their counsel. That that's may right. be just that may be standard, you know, yeah. let alone the situation that's going on. Uh, but, you know, I will say this, the boys, I don't think Chris and Michelle have been in contact with the boys since mm -hmm. Riley was found, in essence. Uh, but when they were asked questions, they always gave short answers back to the family, uh, you know, but there was no no conversations like what we have going on right now. Right. That's interesting. So same question, but over to Luke's 32 bridge. I got to ask, has any employees reached out to the family? Have they given their own accounts personally to you guys? Um, has there been more of a rapport back and forth from the actual facility itself? 
Um, as far as the facility goes, other than the one employee that, you know, you had on your show or the, the lady that kind of vanished, uh, just conversations that we've had with other people that was in the venue. It truly was a mistaken situation as far as we've been aware of and what the family want. A little bit of video they saw inside the bar. Uh, there was no confrontation with any, any people there, male or female. He was not talking to females. There was no guys that he got, you know, got into his face. It was just him and his couple of his frat brothers that were there being dudes, being goofy. Riley was the one that got walked up on and uh, was asked to leave. That's why Riley walked right out of the bar. You know, Riley's non-confrontational. Uh, as far as the bar goes, uh, Luke Bryant's manager, a.k.a. him, also reached out to the family. They reached out to me, uh, was wanting to, uh, you know, pass on their their information in case the family would like to talk to him directly. This was, if I remember right, the Thursday night before we found Riley. But mm -hmm. uh, no, he, Luke Bryant did reach out uh, and, you know, we, we have his direct contact number, et cetera. I don't think the family has reached back out because everything just snowballed within, you know, 20, less than 24 hours from there and then getting Riley's service handled. But, but no, Luke Bryant did, did reach out personally to talk to the family and, you know, and, and show his support and to see if he could do anything else to help find Riley at that moment. Interesting. Very interesting. But, uh, it, it just feels a little, oh, okay. I, I, you know, for me, it just feels a little bit, uh, you know, with all due respect, a, a bit lackluster, right? Uh, and mm -hmm. I'm, of course, I'm not expecting them to do some huge display. And I'm talking about the fraternity. Or what I'm referring to is the fraternity and the and the bar itself. I'm not expecting them to do some huge, you know, display of emotion or 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 anything of that sort. Um, but the fact that we haven't really heard much from both parties just seems a bit i feel like the that the i feel that the family deserves more but that's you know this is not my child and of course if the family is satisfied with with hearing from them from those two different parties then you know of course that's up to them as well but it is so odd to me. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. What are you going to well, say? Well, I was going to say one thing that, you know, and I'm speaking for myself, and this is a business owner. Okay. I think the lack of fireworks you're seeing right now is possible litigation going forward. Mm -hmm. I think we're in that cordial dance. I don't think the family has any means or, or, or ideals to do anything like that. But as a business owner, on the other side of this, i.e. the frat house, i.e. Right. Luke Bryan's, whether, whether something would happen or not, the toxicology will take this to the level I think you're wanting to see. Enough said. I get that fully. I get that fully. Real quick, before I let you go, I, I, I do have a couple uh, things that some people wanted to say really quick. Tiffany, thank you so much. A live TikToker interviewed a homeless guy, quote-unquote Joe, plays the guitar. He said he was on the bridge, and he was the one that said he was fine. So I don't know where that's from. Maybe you do. Uh, maybe that was something that was sent to you. Do you have anything you want to say on that? We had actually, uh, and they actually called him JoJo. You know, this is the first time I've actually said his name because now it's it's out there. But the gentleman's name was Jojo. Uh, there has been numerous people that have been down there, talked to him, said he was fine. My only deal is I was wanting to possibly talk to Jojo because Jojo was the last person who was after him. Because when you're standing mm -hmm. there talking to Riley, especially a homeless person, they are going to be very aware. Was it another homeless person? Was it a person on a scooter? Was it somebody that had that car door open? You, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, I will give that the homeless community is very observant of their surroundings and they have to be, unfortunately, due to living outside and the dangers they live in. So Jojo is the gentleman that uh, that is the person that, you know, we were wanting to possibly talk to. There has been several TikTokers that have talked to him about it. There's just a couple of questions. And that was the biggest one. You know, Jojo, you, you said he was fine, but where did he go from there? No because, kidding. you know, he, he is the last person. He's our, our cop body cam live person. You know, right. he, he could remember his surroundings, etc. Uh, everybody that I've talked to that's uh, personally ran into him uh, has said that he's been very coherent, uh, was, you know, open to talk, which, you know, 
makes me think that he might have that type of memory still left in him. So that that is that is that uh, direction on that. So just so I get this uh, completely clear, you still have not had a conversation with this Joe or this JoJo character, this JoJo no. guy. You haven't right. heard you haven't heard anything from this dude at all, but you would love to be able to con- have a conversation mm-hmm. with him because he's well, literally yes. one of the last people to have a conversation or at least see Riley alive. Yeah. And, and again, he, he's the one that allegedly said, yeah, he's just drunk. He's okay. He's fine. If right? if you remember when you were at the site, you saw the sign that said, beware of dog. Yes. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Take that sign and go to the bridge. How far is that? Not very far. Oh, so wow. that is where that happened. Not very far at all. Oh wow! Now, now you're uh, now you're drinking the Kool Aid, brother. So yeah, now you oh, see why I, that is. I, I've been bathing in this. Oh, Kool-Aid. I know you are, man. We got the big forty-four ounces, <laughs> yeah, baby. Man, That's we, what I'm we, talking we about. Getting drunk off this Kool Aid, baby. But uh, That's interesting. Now you, yeah. Now you see why that that gentleman is important to see who else was in that area. Maybe another homeless person or not, but also mm. Riley's pants. They sure weren't down at that moment. That would be something you think JoJo would see. Like, yo, I walked up on this guy and he was taking a whiz. No kidding. Mm. Oh, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Yeah. 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 So then, okay, then let's say this out loud. Let's say this out to the to the to the internet screets. Ladies and gentlemen that are watching the show, you TikTokers, ex, et cetera, if you are out there and you still have contact, if you know of JoJo, I guess he goes by JoJo, uh, plays a guitar. He was in this live stream video talking about seeing, allegedly saying that he saw Riley. Mm-hmm. He was the one who said, screaming back down at the other two that were down at the bottom of the uh, the hill, I guess, saying, yeah, he's fine. He's just drunk. So... If you have any contact, please, you have any contact to him, please let us know. Because uh, the family, Chris, etc., even myself, would love to pick this man's brain and find out some more information. That's really, 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 really interesting. And thank you so much for that super chat, fam, for, because, uh, I, you know, we probably maybe be able to get closer to something, some sort of clarity on, on the last few moments that Riley – Fell into the river, yeah. and, and, and on top of that, to too, point you know, B, you know what I mean. Go ahead. Yeah, if 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 you know if your listeners feel more comfortable or JoJo would feel more comfortable talking to you, you and me are on the same page. Yeah, you know the questions that that, that we would like to have answered, guys, and, and be respectful. Uh, these are people that live down there that right. uh, did not want their lives turned upside down, and they like to be kept left alone. Let's not bombard this individual. Absolutely. Uh, but no, just simple and let them know. Hey, we. We don't think there's any foul play with him. We would just like to know what he saw. That might bias guys. I'm not exaggerating. And you can back me up. We're down now within a 20 yard window of where that sign is at underneath the bridge, the detention center. Exactly. And guys, if, if he might remember something, it's, mm. it's that that's middle piece of CCTV that I, I personally been looking for. And it might be the answer. Who knows? But you- it's something we would like to know. Yeah. Uh, yes. Please, guys. I mean, proceed, of course, with with care and with respect. And respect. Okay. Let's not harass anybody, make their lives a living hell, etc. I'm just saying, if you know of anything, please contact us. Okay. You can email me and all that stuff, uh, and, and we can find out more information through that way. Okay. Um, real quick, let's continue on here. Uh, uh, Charlotte, thank you so much. Is there an online place? This is a good question too. Is there an online place where we can write messages of love and support to the, for the family, please? As a mother who has lost a son, my heart hurts for this family. Um, well, our condolences out to you, Charlotte. We can only imagine what it feels like. Um, but yes, is there an online place that they can go to to show love, etc.? Um, there, there's been a couple of Facebook groups, and honestly, if you've got a, a place in your, you know, your following two bros they're more than welcome to write them there because i know you'll make sure and forward them to me so that would be an option also absolutely um i'll I'll put a post up after this show on the uh, community page if you guys want to put in some love um condolences etc positive energy what was his favorite color by the way green he said you can't nobody looks bad in green baby 
Right on, right on. So green, if you want to yeah. put some some uh, green heart emojis in the community page when I post it, um, you know, just show some support. Be there in solidarity. That would be greatly appreciated. I'll make sure that Chris sees every single last Perfect. one of those messages. OK, um, another one. Thank you so much, Primrose. <clears throat> Chris, I don't believe Riley belted jeans and size 15 shoe uh, boots would come off and not his undergarments and loose shirt. Praying for definitive answers soon. I agree. I think it's weird. Yeah. I know some people are going, oh, you know, you are you really drinking the Kool-Aid Pascal? No, it's just, it's, it's odd. You're telling me his yeah. socks, his socks and his underwear, which would be the easiest things to slip off after they get wet. Okay. They get loose. They would rip right off like, like that. Nothing, like mm -hmm. nothing. Those are the only things that are still on his body and the shirt are the only things that are still on his body, but boots that are very hard to take off in the first place. I mean, I lied. I've worn cowboy boots once in my life. Once, okay? And I'm telling you, you had to. I had to get on the ground and grab. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I had to grab. I know. It's a yoga move. You know what I'm saying? It's impossible, mm -hmm. y'all. And imagine trying to do that with ankle socks on. That was the stupidest thing I've ever done because your skin gets stuck on that on the uh, the oh yeah itself. So oh you yeah you're like doing this you got to put in vaseline sometimes it's insane it's insane guys so it's how brutal. can he come off his feet in the water like that just like that but the socks and underwear still on that is crazy to me and that's odd okay think about it for a second all y'all who own cowboy boots y'all know who you are think about it for just two seconds that seems weird something happened something happened that would make him remove his boots, whether that's him taking them off himself or someone forced them off of him. Still, no matter what, I guarantee you, he still had to get on the floor and get into this weird yoga move just to take the doggone boots off. Oh, okay? yeah. Something ain't right here, guys. Something ain't right. No. It's weird, but moving on, moving on. Positive vibes. Thank you so much. Uh, the Okay, this is the question I've been wanting to ask you for a minute, but I'm glad she brought this up. The five <laughs> people on the scooters, have they been interviewed? No. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Mm-hmm. Has okay? Do we have any uh, identification on them? Have they have they been been at least identified at least to the no. family? No, that is one of the deals. And, and you know, I, I made that comment. And I go, well, we subpoenaed everything else. Can we not subpoena that scooter company to see who actually was on those scooters? Because they're all GPS to know who those individuals were, because right. that is another huge portion of this, of people that were there. You know, we actually had one of the other guys reach out and he said, bro, did you look at that one video? I counted one and maybe two Teslas that was parked in that area where the smashing grabs. And I'm like, mm. really? And he goes, yeah. And I go, well, they record 24 seven. Now we would have to subpoena that, but all this information we're talking about right here, we submitted to the police department. And as of this moment, uh, we have not had any confirmation that nothing has been followed up on it. Wow. Um, see, and, and unfortunately we can't subpoena you and me really can't, you know, subpoena the scooter company. That's why we were hoping maybe somebody that knew the scooter company or was affiliated with it, you know, but then we're, we're right back in the business side of it without a subpoena. They can't legally give us information because if a crime does happen, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, and, and that's wild though, too, because the, those, uh, those Teslas, that's big. I mean, they're they're recording 24-7. So they probably oh. have some really, really nice footage out there. Uh, whoever mm -hmm. owned those Teslas. Uh, did, have you contacted the people that actually own the Teslas themselves just to talk mm -hmm. to them? Well, we have not, but the police body cam, as he was walking through there, would have picked their tags up. So that is one of the deals we reached out going, hey, you know, you had two officers right. that was walking through there. Body cam would have picked up the plates off of those cars once again, it's an ongoing death investigation. I don't know if it's been followed up or not, but I think those are very viable leads. Okay, okay. I'm going to ask this because, you know, sometimes I just get annoyed with this kind of stuff, and I just got to ask, has the family looked into a private investigator for Riley's case? 
They they have. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, I, I don't know if they've actually done one or not. Uh, when they come home and was preparing for Riley's funeral and just being back home, it was overwhelming. Uh, but now, now that that has been done on Friday, uh, I actually met with the family Monday, met with them yesterday. I'll meet with them today. Uh, there's a lot more clarity and a lot more of uh, the grieving is still there, but answers need to be made and right. have. If you follow me, you know, there's, there's, you have grieving then you get angry and then uh, et cetera. And we're currently in that point now, especially the dads in the war room, you know, Michelle got to have her service. The family got to have her service, their boys home. But in the, and the worst part about it, we're six and a half hours away, seven hours away from Nashville. That's why we're incredibly thankful for the reporters that are there. You, the TikTokers on the ground, the people that just will not let this go because they're also on the same boat as us. You guys are literally our eyes and ears in Nashville. And I think it's incredible. I mean, yeah. I sincerely do. It's, it's, you're, you're keeping the family, not that the family's not motivated, but you are literally day by day keeping the family motivated that there may be hope. Just like when we were looking for Riley, that the right answers may be found. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I think, no matter what, I think we all really give a damn. We're all trying to one. We're all trying to figure out what the hell happened here. And if it is yeah. a situation, with all due respect, if it is a situation that it is just a tragic accident, then right. we will take that happily. But the yes. way that things have been moving, how things have been maneuvered around here in these streets, from uh, law enforcement, et cetera, um, and the information that we've received, you know, even the information that you gave us just today on the show um yeah. i think are crucial pieces of information that i think need some serious a, a serious look into um mm -hmm. and it seems odd that law enforcement would just sit and now look at that and go yeah that's kind of odd boots off pants off socks and underwear still on still very weird to me real quick mm -hmm. shelby just said this and i wanted to make sure you got this too someone in the comments said that they know someone on the scooters and have called police connect them with chris that's a big thing man I, oh 100 I, I, I don't usually do this during the shows and very much but i got to do this really quick if you can bless me with it sure okay that's a big deal big deal okay big deal so hey if you if shelby whoever said that in the comments please email me or something like that, and I'll send that information right over to Chris, okay? Because that could be crucial, because that's the thing. Patsy just said, has the, the video of the scooters been cleared up? No, it's from what we understand, no so far. They still want to get in touch with those people who are riding the scooters because they may have seen something. It was around that same mm -hmm. time. What the hell? Oh, yeah, 100%. And the fact that police yeah. have not even looked at that is still beyond me. It's asinine that they haven't looked at that. That's weird, y'all. No disrespect mm -hmm. to police, okay? No disrespect, but that seems like those because if it was an accident, those guys would have seen possibly him slipping, falling, whatever, him walking down yes. the embankment, maybe to go take a leak, whatever it may be. So it's so weird to me. One last one, Lisa. Thank you so much. Maybe a homeless uh, person found him already gone and stole his pants and boots and then pushed him in the river praying for the family i mean that's a theory what are your thoughts oh it on is that? no we've we've had that theory also what if riley had fallen uh and that had happened the no blunt force trauma is what kind of defuncts that a little bit you know i there's still a very good possibility that that may have happened you know some truth to that but the fact there was no blunt force trauma to the head or the neck or anything like that. Right. Wow. You know, yeah. Once again, that, that's a very viable lead. But then you go back and look at it with what we do know. And you're like, now we have more questions, you know? So, so no broken neck, no nothing. No blunt force trauma is what we were told. What the hell? <laughs> no, no, brother. I'm sorry. It, it, you know, like I'm trying to be as respectful <sighs> as I can. But at the same time, my gut reaction is, what the hell? Because, what? <laughs> I, you know, like I said, I just got so many questions that still, obviously, I mean, I know that you can't answer because we don't have all the answers yet. Mm -hmm. um, but it is very odd to me that he just is found in the river, no scratches, mm -hmm. no marks, no broken bones, no broken bones at all, none. 
correct? Yep. This is what we have been told at this point. So he just, you see what I'm saying? So it just seems a bit odd that he would just fall into the river and then that's it. Then on top of it, no water in the lungs. Yes, I know that there's still possibilities of that actually happening, but it's very rare. But no water in the lungs. Then on top of that, to add the sprinkles and a cherry on top of this kerfuffle of a Sunday, he has no pants on, no boots on, his cell phone's nowhere to be found. His wallet is gone, but he still has his socks and his underwear on. Mm -hmm. Y'all, please make that make sense for me because it still, to me, seems like something may have happened to Riley. And I'm you know, and, and we find out. Oh, brother, you know, in, in this crazy part, we have now given a lot of information out today and we now have a thousand more questions. Uh, another little tidbit, and then I know you've got to wrap up. You've got stuff to do, and I do too. Uh, Riley's billfold had two more credit cards in it. It had cash in it. It had his ID in it, had a school ID in it. The other credit cards were left open just in case somebody tried to use them, i.e. along the lines of maybe a homeless person. Riley had expired. They found his, you know, his pants and boots, right. et cetera. Nothing. Nothing has appeared other than that debit card, which was the card that was used at the bar that night, but nothing else has been found or been used. Oh, I know. But one good thing, and, I, and I'll let you go, I, hmm. I do hope that something positive comes out of this. I did actually made a comment that I would love for Android and Apple to get together and put together something along the lines of the Riley's Law. Uh, to where an official police report has been filed on somebody instead of having to go through subpoenas and all the other crap, as long as they have an official report, uh, they would be eligible to offer up all information, watch, cell phone, any data that they have provided to law enforcement and an immediate family member. Guys, we're talking 72 plus hours, way more than that, actually, before we were ever eligible for that information and i just hmm. think if we could if if somebody has an outlet and a way to reach out and i mean we're talking huge corporations and probably legality they can't do that due to hipaa and everything else but if we could get something like that formatted to where if an actual police report was given on that person you know that information could be released way easier than it was for us to achieve it Guys, that would be huge. That could save a lot of people, hopefully in the future, or at least get more information to the people that need it substantially quicker than what we had to go through. No kidding. Real quick, one last question. Apple Watch. He had his Apple Watch on him still. Everything else was gone, but his Apple Watch yes. was still on him. Did they see or find anything on that at all? The wild part is Riley actually had one of the advanced watches, but unfortunately just had it Bluetooth to the phone. So that's why the watch and the phone went at the same time. Uh, so as far as I've still been told, though, due to iPhone, even though he may have not had particular apps set up on his cell phone for his iPhone, the data is still there. It once again would have been requested. And that's explained a little bit of what I just talked about. The phone had to have a subpoena. The data had to have a subpoena. The Everything that you function on your staff had to have subpoenas for everything. There's not just a bulk subpoena. We learned that from uh, some paralegals, actually, that are in Nashville. They yeah. said because when the first deal come up with the cell phone and they had no information on the watch, they're like, oh, they didn't file the right subpoena. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And we just, as a society, which I understand, everything you know when you're having that conversation with your kid and they look back at you and go well this is what you actually said dad and you're like okay you smart ass right. but you know it's, it's that way in the law too it has to be exactly for that information that you're wanting so right if we could come up with something like that guys it would be incredible for people that have to go through what we've went through in the future i think it would be awesome and if you know i'm paid hey, I'm Cheech and Chong over here smoking the pipe probably, but uh, it'd be cool if something like that could happen. Well, I, I, I'm praying that we get some more clarity 
I'm hoping that we get some more clarity here very, very soon. Uh, you yeah. know, my heart, my my thoughts and prayers go out to you and the rest of the Strain family, because uh, I can only imagine what it what it feels like to have. It, it feels like an incomplete sentence, right? Mm -hmm. That there there's there hasn't been full closure yet, and yes, it it could very well have been a tragic accident, but then at the same time, it may not have been. And if there is a crime that was committed on to Riley, we need to get him justice as swiftly as possible. Right. So again, Chris, I really do appreciate you coming here and just giving us the 411 on all of this stuff. I mean, I know that I still have a lot of questions. I know you answered a lot of them, but I still got a lot of questions and I know you do too. But as we, you know, continue to follow this case and 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 follow you guys, hopefully you guys have a, a short journey towards justice and truth. Yeah, and like you said, if it was truly an accident, there's way too many people there that have seen it. And I and I don't want to seem, you know, not thankful or or greedy. We're blessed that uh, Riley got to come home, and his mama and me and everybody else. That part I am going to be greedy. When we need to talk to Riley, we we've got a spot we can go talk to him now. I, I don't want to undersell that. That is extremely grateful for for what everybody did to help, mm -hmm. but. Also, you know the incredible man that he was, and uh, as long as the family will let me keep the gas pedal down, I'm gonna do it. We're we're gonna we're gonna make some magic happen, and it's all to like your viewer right there with the guys on the scooters. I've yeah. been saying this the whole time. The couple that actually called me that was walking with Riley, the mom and dad, guys, every every little bit helps. It may not be significant at the moment, but that right there. That that's a large piece of the puzzle, and I appreciate her reaching out. But see, that's why the fam is so amazing. That's why the yep. fam is so amazing, and that's why we keep having these shows. This is why we keep having these live shows, these live conversations, so that hopefully we can start getting more the, closer to to some more clarity here. One one last thing before you go, go. But I I, I got this out of nowhere, so I wanted to make sure it's sent. To you, um, so apparently Riley's dad said something last week that they're announcing announcing something big this week. Uh, can you give us any hint about what that is at all? What and and we kind of talked about it a little earlier. Uh, I know the family uh, have been meeting here locally with uh, some officials on what maybe to pursue differently in the mm -hmm. case, even though we're seven hours away. So, yeah, I, I would say probably by Thursday or Friday, the family uh, is going to have another press conference per se uh, and go over what we have now. Hopefully we'll even have a chance to talk to the scooter people by then and just stuff that we've done here in Springfield. OK, OK, uh, <laughs> but that's, that's good to know. I mean, it, you know, the, I guess it's somewhere within this show. So roll back and check it out. Maybe it'll be uh, in there. Uh, you know, and you'll find out what that is. But listen, Chris, I do appreciate you blessing us with your time, giving us some more updates on everything. And, uh, you know, God bless you. I, I hope that this is a, a a quick trip towards justice, a quick trip towards truth. And uh, I'm praying for you guys. Real talk. We appreciate you, brother. You know that 100%. Thanks so much for being on, brother. I'll talk to you soon. All right, man. All right. Peace. Big shout out to Chris for being on. I really do appreciate him being on here uh, and just having the conversation with us because I know that we're all still reeling over him, over Riley being found. We, we are still wondering what the heck happened here. And we thought that once he was found, it was going to be kind of a kind of a fast ending to his story but then when we found out more information about the pants the boots etc it just seems so odd now i know that there are people out here that think hey there was no foul play here this was a tragic accident for sure and there's going to be a lot of other people as well that believe that there was foul play i say yes there's a lot of unanswered questions that are still sitting on the table hopefully we get those answered over time but we also got to remember to just kind of sit on the fence and just let the information fall where the chips fall, where they may, so that we can fully paint the whole picture together and find out what really happened. What was his last moments? What did he encounter somebody? Was he trying to take a leak? Did he trip and fall? Was he sick? 
What happened here? That's one thing I think we're still trying to figure out. There's a lot of pieces of the puzzle that are still out here. Hence the reason why we brought Chris out to talk about those things. And I'm hoping that in time, for those of y'all who share this video, share this inter this interview, share even clips from this conversation that maybe something that st strikes you as odd or interesting, that maybe this will get us closer to getting those other pieces to the puzzle. Because those scooters, for example, let's be real, they were there around the time that Riley was last seen or was last seen where he disappeared did they see something were they involved in something with riley those are all questions that need to be answered again it could be nothing could be absolute innocence but then again it could be something sinister as well we got to remember that but let's get into some of these um things real quick thank you so much rianne for gifting one membership. I really do appreciate it. Mora, thank you so much for gifting five. Sharing is caring. Ash as well. Thank you so much for gifting a membership. Yes. Sharing is caring. Dag Nabbit. Okay. Patsy, thank you so much for the five. Is there a toxicology report out yet? No. They said about 60 to 90 days. And apparently it sounds like there's going to be two of them. Okay. Sounds like there's going to be two of them uh, because they did their own independent Autopsy, so that I'm sure they're waiting for their toxicology report from their independent autopsy report as well, okay? Um, or from their own independent medical examiner, okay? Uh, let's see, or their independent coroner. But Tiffany, thank you so much. The math isn't mathing. I agree 110%. It is not. Uh, pretzels, thank you so much for the 10. Uh, we, we need the tox report and to plan a decoy down, downtown to be watching people walking by, check the pawn sh shops and such. I agree. You know, I think that there needs to be more boots on the ground. But at the same time, now that Riley has been found, of course, they have already laid him to rest. There needs to be an, a, a private investigator of some sort going through. You know what I mean? Just going down there and just doing their due diligence. Just just. Just asking people, barking up the right trees and all that so that maybe we can get closer to something, right? Some justice. Bonnie, thank you so much for the dollar super sticker. I really do appreciate it. It really does mean a lot, guys, okay? But like I said, y'all, I mean, this is this is a, a, a case that is still very odd to me. Again, I sit on the fence. Even though we heard a bunch of stuff, heard a bunch of information, okay, uh, from Chris, which understandably would spark so many questions. I got a lot of questions, but I also still err on the side of we got to find out the hard evidence. We still don't know everything. There's a lot of things that could possibly happen here, but then there's things that don't logically make sense as well. But then again, you know, I've seen things that defy logic in cases many, many times before. So I say, we have to be very, very, very cautious and proceed lightly when it comes to these cases so that we don't go off into that tinfoil hat world and, and start losing our doggone minds. Let's be real, okay? But there is a lot of information that was being said about Riley and how he was found, et cetera, that I still would love to get answers to. And I know I'm not alone. Let's keep it real. I am not alone. Anyway, guys, that is the show. I appreciate all y'all for being here. It really does mean a lot. You guys are incredible. Seriously. Without you guys here, without you guys watching the show, I, we wouldn't be trying to figure some things out bit by bit, minute by minute, conversation by conversation. That's how we do. That's how we do it out here. Okay? That's how we do it out here in these streets. OK, we have the conversations and within those conversations, hopefully we find out more pieces to the puzzle to many cases that we cover in hopes to get justice in the hopes to get the truth. Again, big thank you to Chris Dingman for being on the show. It really does mean a lot. 
I can only imagine how hard it is to have that conversation again and again and again. But I do appreciate him blessing us with his time. Please, guys, if you have any information, anything that's popping off that you may know in regards to this particular case, you can always email me. You can always send a DM. Shoot. You can even put a comment in the comment section down below when the show is over. That would really mean a lot because I'd love to be able to help bring bring some clarity to this case. Because again, it could be a tragic accident. But then again, it can also be something sinister as well. Anyway, guys, again, I appreciate you guys for being here. Please be sure to hit that like button down below before you get out. Before you head out, I'd love to see it go past 1K on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, please do that. Let's get it past 1K really quick. A like don't cost a thing, but it helps this show get out there, gets the story out for Riley's sake. So please hit that like button down below. Hit that reaction button if you're watching on Facebook. If you're watching on X as well, hit that like button down there. Follow me on X. Follow me on Facebook. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Follow me on TikTok as well. I'm starting to do some late night live shows over there. That'd be greatly appreciated. And if you appreciate what I'm doing and like how I tell these stories, please be sure to support. If you've already subscribed to YouTube and you want to support the channel even further, hit that join button down below. If you want to support the channel even more, but don't want to do through support it through YouTube, join my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the Pascal show. Of course, I also have Pascal merch dot com my store where i got clothes and stuff go check those things out made by these two hands real talk made by these two hands and only these two hands so please go check out pascalmerch.com don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel hit that like button down below if you're watching on youtube let's get it past 1k i appreciate you guys but it's time to get going I may be on a little bit later on this evening. We will see a few things pending. But if I do, I'll let you guys know very, very soon. Okay? Anyway, guys, I appreciate all y'all. Have a great one. I'll talk to you guys very, very soon. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. I'll see you guys soon. This is the Pascal Show. Bye.